Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I just got one thing I need to say. Gave my all against the wall. Not right. it was wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, she's still standing, ladies and gentlemen. That's Leela James, and she's saying, didn't I? Like I said, that woman can sing. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, many of you don't know, and a couple of you have been letting me know how impactful the videos have been for you and your life, how educational they've been, and thank you. I appreciate that, honestly. Uh, and I did get your emails, so I did read them, okay? So don't think I didn't. And some of you have made modest donations. I want to say thank you, but that's not why I do this, and so you don't have to do that. And I'm, I'm being serious. I'm not uh, being, uh, what is that stupid word, um, modest. I am not being modest. I'm being me. That is definitely unnecessary. I don't do this for that. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a lot of work that goes into this. I was going to do a video this evening, and I might as well do it now. And this is for those of you who either have had someone issue a warrant for their arrest or know someone who's in jail as a result of a warrant being issued for their arrest. And they didn't know that the warrant was even out there. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a case that I'm about to go and find. And then we're going to go ahead and continue. I just need to show you this case so that you'll know what the law is. One second. Hold on, Leela. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. See this case here? Damien. Stinney. Et al. Versus... Richard Holcomb, it says, notice and a meaningful opportunity to be heard. The cornerstone of due process is that when the deprivation of a protected property interest is at stake, an individual has the right to notice. Milan versus Hoover Trust and Bank Company was a pivotal case because it started in California and made it all the way to the Supreme Court. And that's not the only case that they made such a decision. But here's the understanding so that you guys will know, because you already knew this, okay? You already knew this information right here. What does the term mean that an individual is allowed legal proceedings before being deprived of life, liberty, or property? So it says the due process clause of the Fifth Amendment guarantees due process of law before the government may deprive someone of life, liberty, or property. In other words, the clause does not prohibit the government from depriving you of a substantive right, such as life, liberty, or property. It simply requires the government to follow the law, to follow the process. Well, what's one of the main processes? Well, when they're putting a warrant out for your arrest, what are they depriving you of? Your right to be free. When they put a warrant out for your arrest, they are depriving you of a property interest. Pay attention to that phrase, property interest. The government cannot deprive you of a property interest without giving you notice. Well, what is all this stuff I hear about these secret warrants? Sealed warrants. No-knock warrants. There is no such thing, ladies and gentlemen. The law doesn't permit that. The law requires notice. Let's go back to that case that we told you about. And wait, no, no, let's do let's do the search. Hold on.
Oh, look at that. I spelled it right. Now, it was Central Hoover Bank and Trust Company. Okay, that's the case. You'll hear me talk about this case all the time. I stumbled onto this case. Okay, when I first got involved in redress and understanding redress, you better believe it. Now, what I got to do is I got to go down to the section. Give me one second. Oh, get this email junk out of my way. Let me pause y'all for a second. Let me show y'all where the court gets their jurisdiction. You said, this controversy questions the constitutional sufficiency of notice to beneficiaries on judicial settlement of accounts by the trustee of a common trust fund established under the New York blah, 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 blah. Now, it says whether the beneficiaries were deprived of property without due process of law. That's the focus. The same thing when the issuance of a warrant. Now, one second, got to find the others. This is one of the times it is stated. It says, quite different from the question of state power to discharge trustees is that of the opportunity it must give beneficiaries to contest. You must have an opportunity to say, no, I disagree. Many controversies have raged about the cryptic and abstract words of due process clause, but there can be no doubt that at a minimum, they required that deprivation of life, liberty, and property be adjudicated, be preceded by notice and opportunity to be heard, opportunity for a hearing appropriate for the nature of the cause. In two ways, proceeding does or may deprive beneficiaries of property. It may cut off their rights to have their trustee answer for negligent or illegal impairment to their interests. And their interests are presumably subject to diminution in the proceeding by allowance of fees and blah, 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 blah. Give me one second. Got to find the other section. So when you're going to this case, what you're going to do is you're going to look for the ordained citing because it says against the interests of the state we must balance the individual interests sought to be protected by the 14th so-called amendment this is defined by our holding that the fundamental requisite of due process of law is the opportunity to be heard this right to be heard has little reality or worth unless one is informed that a matter is pending and can choose for himself or herself whether to appear or default or acquiesce or contest. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the same thing when the issuance of a warrant. According to the Fourth Amendment, no warrant shall issue unless upon probable cause. Probable cause is a hearing, ladies and gentlemen. You've heard of it before, a probable cause hearing. Probable cause is always a hearing where evidence is heard. Every last one of you who've ever had a warrant issued against you, fight, challenge that illegal procedure. You can get the whole case thrown out. Why? Well, ladies and gentlemen, when that warrant was issued, it's called the forbidden fruit doctrine or the poisonous tree doctrine. Whatever happened at the beginning taints everything else thereafter. So it's inadmissible. And yes, you can challenge jurisdiction at any time, even a hundred years later. That's right. Jurisdiction can be challenged at any time. There's no statute of limitations on a jurisdictional challenge. And if they violated your rights, that means they lost jurisdiction. So you can go in and challenge jurisdiction. See what I'm talking about? That's the stuff that I'd be talking about. Now, uh-oh, I went backwards. I wasn't supposed to go backwards. Ah, give me a second. I got to go forward with, hey, Leela. And I'm sorry, young lady, but give me a second. I don't know where the meter is, ladies and gentlemen. Where your meter at? No. I didn't want to do that. Hold on. Oh, there's the meter. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Uh-oh, I went... Why you let me go too far, Leela? 
Y'all, y'all see, I, I, I ain't used to this. Okay. Fall for you. Yeah, I can live with fall for you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have to uh, let you know what's been going on. Two days ago, or was it yesterday? It was yesterday. Uh, one of the people who live around here came to the property. And he was going to approach the front door, but he saw the alarms going off because I have a security system. And they're motion detectors. And no matter what angle you come at, you're going to set off a motion detector on this property. You're in, even at night, you're going to set off a motion detector. You're going to set off a motion sensor. You're going to set off a motion light. Sorry, it's just the way I got things set up. And I just started saving things to the cloud for the first time. Other than that, I was saving it to the hard drive. Well, now it gets saved automatically to the cloud. Ow. Well, anyway, he didn't come on to the property. Because he saw the do not trespass signs. There are do not trespass signs everywhere. Well, he was walking. And because of the way he was dressed, I thought he was a bum. Literally. Thought he was homeless. And, you know, because people come out in this area and they hike and they camp out. Well, he goes down a road that literally there are no houses. You keep straight down that road, you're not going to run into nobody. And I mean, you can travel for 20 miles. And you're not going to run into a single person. Ladies and gentlemen, I got up to see where he was because I knew he went down that road. So I got up to see if he was still walking because it didn't make sense to me. And I didn't see him and I couldn't figure out where he go. Well, 40 minutes later, a police car comes down the, car, the street, one of their little SUVs. And... A car comes following right behind it. Okay, no big deal. But the car stopped right at my corner. Now, there's no other homes on my corner. I'm the only one who lives on this block. You know what I'm saying? And this is a long block, okay? This block goes for more than a mile. So I'm the only one who lives on this block. Well, he stopped, got out of the car, and it was the same guy. I say, what? That's right, the same guy. Ooh, doggy. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, by the way, I'm about to show you how good I am when it comes to this law stuff. Ladies and gentlemen. When he got out of the vehicle, he this is the second time because the first time when he walked, he went over by the solar panels. And then the second time he went over by the solar panels. And then after he went over by the solar panels, he went back to the center of the intersection. Then I looked up again. There's the police car again. What What the, you know, and it's the sheriff's officer. So I'm going, okay, this is interesting. And he's pointing at the solar panels and he's pointing at my house. Now, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't care. And I'm looking at him through the camera, through my uh, handheld device here. Because when the alarms go off, I get a notification on my handheld device that, you know, hey, somebody's on your property. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't bother to communicate with them because it's got a two-way microphone. I said, no, nah, we ain't going to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, what I noticed, and I did notice this shortly thereafter, that he was pointing to the other side of the highway and tire tracks. Apparently somebody stole something from him, stole solar panels, and he claims that they drove that way and drove this way. So he was, I guess, thinking that I took his solar panels. What he doesn't understand is when we put, our, put my solar panels up, it was a custom job as far as the stands. And so the guy who did it took pictures of the custom job because he wanted to show it to other people as to what he created. Because it's the first time nobody else has done it like this. So first time it was done. So it's his design. You know, I told him what I wanted and he came up with the idea. Well, technically I drew what I wanted and then he piggybacked off of that and created what we have. Okay. But he gets all the credit. I don't get none. 
<laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, they talk with the sheriff. The sheriff comes and he knocks on the door. There's nobody there, so he doesn't get an answer. So he knocks again. Then he starts taking pictures of the place. Starts taking pictures of the sides. Starts taking pictures of the back. Then he takes pictures of the license plates. Now, I have my Eon license plate on the vehicles. And that's because they're husbandry vehicles. Because the DMV is giving me a hard time registering them. So I made them husbandry vehicles. If you don't know what a husbandry vehicle is, look up the word husbandry vehicle. Lord have mercy. Anyway, I live in a rural agricultural area. All right? So husbandry vehicle. Anyway, he's taking pictures. But I have do not trespass signs. I have you're being 24-hour surveilled signs on my property. They're everywhere. You can't go any 50 feet, 40 feet, 20 feet without running into a sign. He obviously saw the sign. Ladies and gentlemen, what he is thinking he'll be able to get away with is saying that it was in plain view. No, ladies and gentlemen, it's plain view from the sidewalk. It's not plain view when you're on a person's property. When you're on a person's property and they got a do not trespass sign and you trespass and claim it's plain view, you don't get that. Now, what he'll say is that he was doing an investigation. He doesn't get to hang on the investigation either. Because what happened? Nobody saw anybody come on this property. I got cameras. <laughs> I know for a fact that ain't nobody came on this property with no stupid uh, solar panels. So he wasn't doing an investigation because he didn't have anybody who saw anybody come on this property. So his investigation did not lead him here. Ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to understand. Have you ever heard police talk about their authority and obeying them when they give you an order? Well, did you guys know that police officers cannot give you an order unless you are under arrest? Unless you've committed a crime? A traffic infraction does not permit the police to give you an order. Remember, the police only have authority over the public. They're public servants. Police only have the authority over the public when they exercise their authority. And their authority only arises when there is witness of a crime. A traffic infraction is not a crime. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after he took the pictures, he goes back talks to the individual and then he comes back to the property and he puts his card in the door but he puts it in such a way so that if somebody was inside they open the door the card falls and he'd be able to tell that somebody was there or that if they came home they'd have to take the card out or the card would fall and he'd be able to know that somebody was there and when i finally got home i gave him a call uh texted him i didn't call him because it was late and it was sunday morning so I texted him, ladies and gentlemen. I want y'all to follow me. And I told him how much I appreciated the fact that he was on my property and the other person was on my property without permission. And that it appears they were talking about solar panels. And the fact that he and his partner have driven by my place looking at my solar panels for the last two years. Okay? Literally. They they drive this is the main this is one of the main roads. So they drive this road Wednesdays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Tuesdays, Fridays, and sometimes on Saturdays. This this is their patrol. So I told him, and I don't appreciate you taking pictures of anything on my property. And I mentioned that like I said, he's gonna say plain view, and I'm gonna say, and you don't have a plain view argument. Because you came on the property after you saw the no trespass signs. And so the no trespass signs prevented you from being on the property taking pictures. You could take pictures from off the property, but you can't take pictures while you're on the property. And taking pictures of license plates of all of my vehicles, no justification for that. Because my license plate have nothing to do with your so-called investigation. I didn't tell them that part. Um... Ladies and gentlemen, what I just did is the same thing I did with the guy who was in Puerto Rico and the officer kept clicking on his clicker, trying to get his alarm to work. Every time he did that, it constituted an illegal search. Well, every time this officer took a picture, 
It constituted an illegal search. I didn't give him permission to search my property. He had no right. See, the outside of the property, one guy said, well, you don't have a fence. Yes, I do. I have four stake poles here. And they weren't put in by me. They were put in by the county initially because I'm a corner lot. So they have already put the poles there. So there's what's known as an imaginary fence. And it's the same as if it was a 12 foot high fence. So the moment he saw the sign, hey, no trespassing. That was the limit of his so-called authority. So once he went past that, he now violated law. Why? Because he didn't have proof or any evidence that there was any crime to investigate here. He just had somebody who suspected possible blah, 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 blah. Well, let's just say there is a warrant and he was, it was all a ruse. and He was here to serve a warrant. Well, he lost that ability just with all of that. So I contacted him, but it's been a very agitating day. Had a lot to do. And then I'm wondering what's going on because there's been a lot of activity around my property and there shouldn't be activity around my property. I'm in the middle of nowhere. There should be no activity around my property. But the last two weeks, that's exactly what's been happening. Oh, well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, being able to articulate that to him, I know that's the reason why he didn't call, but this is one of those officers who's going to nut up and get an attitude, and I'm prepared for that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have taught our people how to get a bond so that they have a bond so that in case anything would go wrong, they would be able to bond out without having to pay a bail bondsman or call grandma and say, Grandma, can you go sign for me? I'm in. <laughs> Get me out of here. Anyway, I have $75,000. And if I need to have $180,000 or $280,000, I can get that. Okay? But hold on now. That's our Fourth Amendment Securing One's Property Program. We got an update for you guys coming very soon this week. All right. Anyway, you know, a change is going to come. This Lee Lit James. I knew I heard that beat before because it's, it's in the background. So we gonna, we can't play it that loud because it's too loud for me. All right, ladies and gentlemen. With that situation, I went back into town and I went to Denny's and I got some paperwork done. Uh, Because there's going to be a lawsuit against the judge's bond. And then we got one more. Oh, you know what? That's a shame. I was wondering why I wasn't tired. I got a sleeping pill right here I got to (laughs) take. It's 7 o'clock. So I'll get my sleep tonight. Uh, Because I've been up for how long? Oh, almost 48 hours. Too long. 48 hours. And because the property, oh, that's the other thing about the individual and the solar panels. My solar panels, the area around it is nothing but mud. See, it's been raining. I did that on purpose. So there's little small mountains, but that is clay and sand mix. Did that on purpose. You want to come take mine? Then you're going to go through something, especially during the winter. Did that on purpose. Just get make sure people get it, their attention got. All right, ladies and gentlemen, back to the reason for this video. Whether you guys believe it or not, there have been a lot of people who have had warrants issued for their arrests. Now, this is not talking about the individuals who have warrants issued because they don't appear in court. See, that's that notice thing. When they give you notice to appear, you receive your notice. That's why you have to show up. Everybody, you ain't got to show up. No, you ain't got to go to that court. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah. Anyway, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, I just read you the case where all they have to do is give you notice. And after that, they can deprive you of life, liberty, and property. Isn't that what they do? So you have to challenge their jurisdiction once they give you notice. Didn't the Supreme Court just say that? Go back and listen to what was read, ladies and gentlemen. They just told y'all how to handle your cases. 
okay? Oh, by the way, stop letting these judges out talk you. Stop letting these judges interrupt you. Stop letting these judges raise their voices to you. If they raise their voice, say on the record, why are you raising your voice to me? I'm not your child, literally. I'm not joking with you guys when I say this. Well, if a judge raised their voice to you on the record, say, why are you raising your voice to me? I am not your child. Now, I want you guys to say that, but you know what I normally tell them? And I'm being honest with you. I want you all to know this. I would say, why are you raising your voice to me? I am not your mama. When you talk to me, you will take some of that junk out of your voice. I'm not joking, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you can talk to your mama like that, but you definitely can't talk to me like that. There's nothing she can say. There's nothing they can say. Okay. Y'all see the way that song started out? Right along with the water. That was all right. Okay. Right along with the water. The it, it sound perfect. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, stop letting these judges take control over you. Now, uh, 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 they have the right to be in control of the courtroom. That's their job. They're under Roberts rules. So you have to be respectful. Okay. It's an institution. You have to be respectful. However, that judge raised their voice to you or cut you off while you're talking. You say, no, excuse me. You do not get to talk while I'm talking. I sat up here and listened to you. You will give me equal time. I don't know what you think you're doing. That's called equal protection of law, ladies and gentlemen. If a judge gets to talk for 10 minutes, so do you. Now, if you don't believe me, go back and look at the law. Go back and look if they give the prosecution this. Oh, by the way, let me ask you this question. Why do they do cases where the prosecution gets to go first, then the defense goes, then the prosecution goes again a third time, uh, well, a second time? Excuse me, how is that fair? Prosecution doesn't get to do rebuttals. Why do they do that? So that they can get a conviction. That's why they do that. Now, you notice how the judge says, okay, I'm going to have to excuse the jury. What are you excusing the jury for? Isn't a jury supposed to be informed as to all the particulars of the case? So why are you excusing the jury? What are you saying they can't hear? Of course, the jury can hear. They're supposed to weigh all the evidence and all of the facts. Well, you will disregard that. Excuse me. Who are you telling the jury to disregard? It's up to them to choose whether to disregard it or not. You don't get to order the jury. The jury is in charge of the case. A person who demands a trial by jury the jury's in charge. Oh, well, a jury trial is different. <laughs> the judge is in charge of a jury trial. That's a statutory piece of junk. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. That's the problem because people don't understand the difference between between the two. And that's shame on y'all. So that's the first thing you understand about due process. Due process says equal protection of law. Prosecution goes once, you go once. If the prosecution goes a second time, you get to go a second time. That's the law. And if they don't let you, then you challenge that on appeal for violating of your due process right and the equal protection of law clause of the Declaration of Independence, not of the 14th Amendment, but equal protection of law clause of the Declaration of Independence. Okay? That's how you handle that stupidity. Now, we're going to talk about something else. Here's to let you know why the prosecution in America win 98% of their cases. First, they issue warrants without notifying the party. So now the person gets to stay in jail because they got to post bail. All right, pay attention. Then after they do that, the prosecution gets to gather evidence. But you don't get to gather evidence because your so-called defense attorney is not going to get you evidence. Okay. Because the defense attorney and the prosecution are officers of the court. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, about that. They're officers of the court. So how can all these officers of the court, three officers of the court, the judge is an officer of the court, prosecution is an officer of the court, and the public defender is an officer of the court. Even if it was a private attorney, he's still an officer of the court. All of the officers of this court against you. How can you get a fair trial? Ask yourself the question. How can you get a fair trial? Sorry, Leela's not supposed to stop playing. Okay, there she go. 
Hold on. That's where she's supposed to be. So how can you get a fair trial? So that's why they win most of their cases. You guys just got to start challenging them. You just start, you have to think logically. You have to go, excuse me, there's no law that allows you to do that. No, that's a statute. That's not a law. Statutes are not law. And if they say, well, statute, no, don't well me. If you want a well, then you go and dig it and you get your water from there. But I am not drinking out of your wells. Talk about well. Mother. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is the game. The only problem is most of you guys don't understand the game. It's just that simple. You've got to understand the game or you will not get anywhere with the game. This is the system. This is how it's run. So if you want to challenge the system, if you want to correct the system, if you want to tell the system where to, to go, then you're going to have to understand it's all logic, people. Y'all know right from wrong. Y'all know what they can and cannot do. So start saying, stop, you can't do that. No, you don't have my permission to do that. No, I don't care what you say. You're not going nowhere forward. I said no. That's what you guys are going to have to start doing. It doesn't matter if you act a fool. I'll hold you in contempt. No, I apologize to the court, but there ain't no way in the world I'm going to let you do that. But y'all haven't been doing that, ladies and gentlemen. Now go watch the YouTube videos where the people do speak up, where they do say, no, you're not doing that. No, you're not calling me that. No, you're not going there. And look and see the difference in how those cases turn out. Y'all are thinking y'all got to say the same words they say. Y'all are not paying attention to the rebuttal. They are doing a rebuttal, ladies and gentlemen. They are rebutting the presumption that the judge can do whatever the, they want. Now, look, I'm doing a document now going after the judge's bond, okay? That's going to be for a Fourth Amendment program. But look, here's the thing. If a judge was immune, then why do they have a bond? Wait, hold on. The bond is to protect you against their stupidity. So if they're immune, why do they have a bond? Ladies and gentlemen, if they were immune, they don't need a bond. Exactly. Amazing, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to let you go. I got to take this little sleepy pill. It's uh, called Alterel. Hold on. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, Alterel. I spelled it wrong. Now, I think this is the one here with the three ingredients. Right here. This one. Right here. Okay. You want to get yours at Walmart. Do not. It's all natural. All natural. You want the one with the three ingredients. Not the one with the two ingredients. The one with the three ingredients. Works better for some reason. Okay. You want to get the one with the three ingredients because each one of them are different. Okay. And you want to get the 60 capsule one. Walmart, it's $20. Okay, there it is, Walmart. Well, this is it's $20, no matter where you go. $20. I believe it is this one right here with the woman sleeping. That's her. That's it right there. The woman sleeping. That Oh, stop it. Okay, this is the one right there. Okay? Alterel. It's all natural. It'll put you back on your regular sleeping cycle. You don't believe me? Try it. It will also mellow you out. Well, it ain't doing a good job on you because you be like catching people out and telling people off and telling Bart and, and Chat GPT where to go. And how do you going to say that, that this thing mellows you out? You don't be big. Shut it up. God. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, yes, I'm advertising and I'm promoting and I'm suggesting Alterel. Why? Because it worked for me. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. I want you to understand. Nine days straight without sleep you guys see how how often i'm up and how many days i'm up i told you i'm almost 48 hours now almost 48 hours now one o'clock it will be 48 hours okay 
of no sleep. I can't go on like this. Okay? So, with that being the case, ladies and gentlemen, Alter L. That's what I'm about to take. Alter L. So, I am recommending Alter L. Oh, watch the YouTube videos on it. You'll see everybody praising Alter L. Okay? It's all natural. I stumbled on it. I've been taking so many antihistamines to go to sleep because that was the only non-narcotic I could take. Well, I found out that, and this is my fault for not doing the research on the side effects, that the side effects for antihistamines was brain damage, memory loss. I didn't know. Okay. So now you can see when I say that my future is, well, I've already been done. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. You're, man, I don't think I did tell you guys. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. My doctors have diagnosed me with dementia and Alzheimer's. I, I, If I didn't tell you all that, Lord have mercy. Oh, then that explains every... Oh, that just... Oh, that makes everything so much more... Oh, God, that... Oh, I was... Oh, now nah, I don't have to wonder no more. Your mama don't have to wonder no more. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it is a very big possibility it was caused by a drug known as, hold on, let me show you the drug so that you can see what it did. Ladies and gentlemen, Anatriptyline, when I first got it, they used it as a muscle relaxer. Okay, so this one talks about side effects. So let's click on anatriptyline. Anatriptyline is a, they use it as an antidepressant now. When I first got it, it wasn't used as an antidepressant. They use it as an antidepressant because it puts you to sleep. And I like it because of the dreams that you have on anatriptyline. Man. Vivid and everything colorful. Oh, look at all the little creatures. Uh, a small number of children, teenagers, and young adults, 24 up to 24 years of age, took antidepressants, mood elevators, such as anatriptyline, during clinical studies, became suicidal, thinking about harming or killing oneself, or planning or trying to do so. I've been taking antitriptyline since 1998. Okay. I stopped taking it uh, in 2020. Children and teenagers and young adults who take antidepressants to treat depression or other mental illnesses may be more likely to become suicidal. Experts, blah, blah, blah. Don't care about that. No, don't care about that. Healthcare, don't care about all of that. Why is this medication prescribed? Symptoms, depression. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not what it was prescribed for at first. When they first came out with this particular Anatriptyline. It was not prescribed for what you call it as a mood stimulator. All of that. It was only a sleep aid. That's why I took it and a muscle relaxant. Literally, that's why they gave it to me as a sleep aid and a muscle relaxant because those were my two issues. Well, anyway, uh, how should the medication be? Anatriptyline comes in a tablet, uh. 25 milligrams, most people, I was 50 milligrams. Some people, I, I had this one guy in Puerto Rico. He took seven 100 milligram tablets at one time. Now, I want you to pay attention. He got up in the middle of the night. He, we're in jail. He got up in the middle of the night. He's on the top bunk. Later that day, he was wearing a brace because he had dislocated his shoulder. And collarbone because he fell out of the top bunk. Now, I'm going to tell you, in Puerto Rico and in all prisons, inmates give each other's drugs, medications to one another. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. To one another. And when they do so, that's their habit. As a matter of fact, in Puerto Rico... <laughs> these idiots were giving this medication to these guys. These guys were chemists. 
you know, they were taking the drugs that they were getting from the pharmacy in the prison and making it into heroin. Literally, I watched, I literally watched them shoot up in the prison. Because I'm usually the guy that's doing the paperwork for the so-called shot callers. So I'm the guy who's in there, get to know everything that's going on, and I know what's going on, I know where the cell phones are, I know who's doing what, who's planning what. I'm that guy that knows everything. I, I'm a confidentiality. That's, that's how I survive in prison, is keeping my word and not saying anything about what I see. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking for side effects. Other uses for the drugs treat eating disorders, post-hepatic neurological burning and stabbing pains, aches that may last for months and years, shingles infection to prevent migraine headaches. That was the other reason they gave it to me. And let's see, the medication may be prescribed for other uses. Doctors and pharmacists, special precautions are to be followed. Uh... About allergic reaction and untruthfully and other medications. Doctors, nope, that's not, none of that junk matters. What special dietary instructions? Nope, there's really nothing. It just, you have to drink water with it because it dries you out. It is a uh, antihistamine. Uh, side effect, nausea, vomiting, drowsiness. The drowsiness, the weakness and tiredness, nightmares. It's not really nightmares, okay? Uh, dry mouth, yes. Constipation, yes. Uh, yeah, difficulty urinating, never me, but yes, I could see that happening. Blurred vision, not me. Pain, burning, tingling in hands and feet. Yeah, I can say that that's, uh, oh, uh, changes in sex drive. It's, uh, an aphrodisiac, literally. Excessive sweating, nope. Uh, changes in appetite and weight. Confusion, yeah, if you take too much. And unsteadiness. Uh, equilibrium. Uh, let's see. Weakness, numbness, arms and legs. Crushing chest pain, rapid pounding, irregular heartbeat, severe rash, swelling, yelling, yellowing. I'm sorry. Really? I didn't have any of the muscle spasms. Uh, usual bleeding or bruising, seizure, and hallucinations. Not hearing voices. But the hallucinations in your dreams, yes. In your dreams. Uh, that's why I liked it, because it gave me some of the best dreams in the world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, anatryptyline. When you take this junk, it will lead to memory loss. See, symptoms of overdose may include coma, loss of consciousness for a period of time, confusion, problems concentrating, hallucinating. Okay. That's where the memory loss comes from. So it could have been that this particular drug that I took more than any other. As a matter of fact, I sought it because of the dreams. I love dreaming. And there's a price to pay. That's anatryptyline. So stay away from that junk, y'all. All right. Hey, that's the end of this. Thank you, Leela. Rest of y'all. Take care.